Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel, my name is Shanks. In today we are going to cast a 1v1 replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the legendary map Forts of Eisen between Gonzor and Mordor. We have the yellow Gonzor player, Anuel. He's facing against the orange Mordor player, Dunedain. On the most famous map, El Clasico matchup, good versus evil. I like this. We have Columstart into the Orc pit and he's capturing this mill immediately at the beginning of the game and now of course, Mordor has to play a bit more passive and defensively at the beginning of the game since it's crucial for Mordor to keep those settlements outside protected as long as he can since that's the only money income he will have for the majority of the early game. Mordor investing 400 into the Orc Pit, 150 for the Golem. That means if he loses those mills, he will be out of the game before the game even gets started. Golem is crucial for the defense. Especially because Gollum is kind of extremely tanky against soldiers and he can keep them busy long enough. But smart move from the Gondor player actually moving through the middle. Normally Gondor likes to move from the top side. But it's about mind games of course, you know. Sometimes you need to do the obvious stuff, sometimes you need to do the other stuff. If you do obvious the same stuff, it's kind of predictable. Also this is unpredictable. Very smart move from Gondor to use the Elven Wood. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking because Elven Wood Besides giving you a 40% armor buff, also nullifies the leadership bonuses more the orcs are getting from the Great Eye of Sauron. It means no leadership is available right now. He can move the eye on top of the orcs <laughs> all he wants. They have still no leadership. But he's of course trying to outnumber them. Gollum is being in the middle of the fight. And orcs are trying to surround them. In the meantime, Hobbit was capturing the farm at the bottom left side and now he's also moving ahead to deal even more economical damage. And what you can always do with the Hobbit is you can try what actually happened here. How did he lose the fight so hard? I, to be honest, didn't expect this outcome at all. And those workers are not doing anything. Just go send them to work. Now you also gotta deal with the Hobbit. Very important. You don't want the Hobbit to kill all your workers just like that, you know? And Mordor has to do a lot of stuff. Like, for example, creeping many, many work layers. This way, Gondor can't do that, and Gondor can't unlock the Gun of the White Power Point from the spellbook, which you're eventually gonna do anyway, but you will hopefully be able to delay that. Gondor has a couple of playable options in this matchup, as for example, getting Gondor Knights. That's, of course, the most important stuff, because that's the only way you can fight for the map control. But then you can choose if you want to upgrade them with heavy armor, forge plates, and if you want to put pressure on the, or on the enemy mortar base, or if you want to just save up for Gandalf immediately. It means you go for a full base after the second or third Gondor Knight and you just save up the money without going for upgrades on the Gondor Knights for Gandalf, who might be, of course, the most impactful hero in this matchup. Early, mid and also late game. So hit and run, hit and run. Hobbit, Peregrine and Took. Showing his quality. Hit and run, hit and run. That's all he can do, by the way, because Gondor has only two soldiers at the beginning of the game, and once you lose them, you can only play around with the Hobbit until your Gondor Knights are gonna join the battlefield. During all this time, Mordor was also able to creep. Yes, he won't be able to be buy the settlement, but it's okay. He was able to get the experience, power points, and also money. Money is the most important. I like this a lot, by the way. Haradrim Palace makes you play the game actively as Mordor, because if you go for the Troll Cage, the second Gandalf joins the battlefield, you will be not able to play the game anymore. But with the Haradrims, you can capture those outposts, put them inside the outpost, and then you have like a protection, and later on you can also recruit the soldiers of Rune, which are gonna act like a pikeman, and you can use them for pressuring the enemy farms. This way you are much more actively playing the game instead of just camping inside your castle, and trying to hope that you might be able to defend yourself. I will be moves, moved, if you don't know, I have Sauron, is also able to reveal invisible units like the Hobbit. And by the way, also Haradrims are quite good against the Gondor Knights, so you need to be careful to not trample them. Peregrine Tuk was able to get in safety. He's a great counter unit, if you don't know, against the Haradrims. So he's trying to deny that, very smart here from the Gondor player. He knows what's the plan from the Mordor. He Mordor player is trying to buy this, you know, outpost. And the best way you can deny it is buy the outpost for yourself. That's of course an investment of 600, which is not cheap at the beginning of the game for Gondor, but this way you can make sure that Mordor is not going to have the money he needs or, you know, the chance he wants to buy this outpost, which is extremely hard to be taken down early on from Gondor faction, since those Haradrims on top of the outpost will hurt a lot. 
but Mordor is going to be at least able to buy the camp or the outpost at the bottom left side. With that, he will also be able to creep the Warclan, no problema. He was also able to creep this one, which is amazing, and it looks like he want to make a move to the Warclan at the left side of the river. So he was able to creep this one already, this one, and this one as well. So Gondor was just able to creep one single Warclan during all this time. Let's see if he can also take the second one. He should be able to, because it's only Oryx he has to deal with, so no problema for the Gondor Knights at all. He has so far uh, three Gondor Knights. One of them is healing up. The second one is also being sent back to heal up. And the third Gondor Knight for now is being used for pressuring the enemy Mordor base. But there are some runes, soldiers of runes. Oh, nice micro from the Gondor play. He will get in safety just in time. Mill has been taken down once again. And that's the thing, you know. Because Gondor Knights, they cannot fight against the soldiers of rune anytime soon. They are even tankier again, uh, than, than the pikemen from Isengard. But you need to also keep in mind that they are not able to purchase any upgrades beside the banner. So no chance of Mordor getting heavy armor or forge plates with any single unit. You will also be able to creep this one. Potentially also the one at the top left side. So with that being said, it's split it 3-3. On the map you have 6 Warclayers. And 3 of them were creeped by Mordor. This one. And the bottom ones, you know. Bottom right and bottom left. And the other creeps are going to be secured by the Gondor player. And for now, he was also going for the Elven Wood at the beginning of the game. It looks like he want to save up for the Gandalf. So I'm not seeing him getting upgrades like the shields or no forge plates, no heavy armor. And since he has over 2000, I'm assuming he is trying to save for Gandalf the Great. He needs around half a power point still to turn him into the Gandalf the Red. But again, you will eventually get there after killing Oryx left and right. And he has also still the creep at the top left side to creep, you know? If also Farami on the field, which is smart, because uh, the weakness of the runes and of also of the Haradrim units from the Mordor faction are heroes. Like, for example, Farami or even Peregrine Tuk can deal massive amount of damage to those uh, men of the East units. But with the Haradrims, of course, and with the chains of the runes uh, from the Haradrim Palace level 2, Mordor will be actively able to fight for the map control, so he doesn't need to stand or sit in his base all the time and hope that he will be able to stall the game long enough until he unlocks the Balrog summon from the spellbook. I like that. Gondor has almost 5000, Mordor has only around 1200. But that's fine, with the industry which he was using right now, he will also get a bunch of money, so he will get to the point to collect 5000 for the Nazgul pretty much in no time. But Nazgul is to be careful, because Faramir's warning arrow hurts him big time, as well as the Easter Light from Gandalf. So it's going to be a tough situation for the Nazgul. You should, you know, you should try to avoid that, and you should try to use the Nazgul only for killing Gondor Knights or fighting for the map control. Okay, so runes, they will be able to, of course, fight for the map control. Just get more and more of them on the field all the time, like he does. What I would always recommend is to at least keep one or two of them, on, you know, inside your castle, just for the worst case scenario. I personally would always like to have like a plan B. You know, just in case something goes super wrong, that you have always some units in the backup plan you can rely on. Very important. You don't want to put all your hopes into the single card, you know? So, ladies and gentlemen, Gandalf the Knight is on the field. That's dope. Gandalf is going to clean up the runes in no time, because again, their weakness are heroes, and Gandalf is the best hero in the game, alongside with Aragorn from the Rohan faction. And you see that? They are getting absolutely slaughtered. one shot it. No problemo for Gandalf. You don't want to feed, but on the other side, it's okay when you keep the opponent busy, you know? If you can actually keep them distracted from your own castle, that's gonna buy you, of course, as Mordor time. So it looks like for a chance to Vizaplast the enemy units, but Mordor is paying attention. He's trying to distract and or dodge the incoming damage. Easter Light will be used to kill the Haradrims on top of the outpost, which is gonna give Mordor or Gondor the chance, sorry, to destroy this outpost fully with his Gondor Knights. Oh, now he's not paying attention. Vizaplas one shot it. Just like that. That is Faramir also hunting some runes. And also great for Faramir because he's getting more and more experience. And once he's level 5, he will also unlock his leadership, which is a 50% armor leadership. And also gives you fear resistance. Just like Gandalf. Gandalf also gives you fear resistance. Which is pretty nice and useful against the Nazgul. Talking about the Nazgul, he's gonna join the battlefield very soon. But Mordor is slowly but surely losing the map control i will be used there is no reason to not use it to not to use the eye because you know you have nothing to save it for at least for now you have no army 
And after the Nazgul, the question is, what is the plan of Mordor? Is he gonna try to save for the Witch King or is he gonna finally make the transition into the Troll Cage for some stronger creatures of Middle-earth? We're gonna find out very, very soon. The output slowly but surely going down. Baram is almost level 5. Level 5 is unlocked right now. So basically, with Farami and Gandalf being close to the Gondonites, they will have 100% increased armor. Double the armor, but no damage leadership. And that's the biggest weakness of Gondor. While all the other factions like Mordor, Rohan, and also Isengard have a lot of leadership. I mean, Isengard has at least the Warchant from the Spellbook, and uh, Rohan has Theorin, Mordor has I, Mordor has Darkness, Mordor has Witch King, Drummer Troll. But Gondor has only Boromir, and Boromir is an extremely slow hero who is also hard to be leveled up since most of the units you want to kill with Boromir are faster than you. So if he disengages you, you will never be able to catch them. We have now the transition from Gondor into the Archer range, which is of course needed. You need to have some sort of counters to the Nazgul beside the Gandalf, who has not unlimited Archer amount of powers. And of course, you don't have to deal only with one Nazgul. You will have to deal with the Nazgul and the Witch King and even potentially the third Nazgul right after that. There is a Nazgul. He's trying to pressure the outpost. I mean, Nazgul is safe, you know, until Faramir is getting nearby. There is Faramir being the Knight of Gondor. But it's always nice when you can destroy those uh, statues because it's giving you a huge amount of power points. And Mordor is indeed only one power point away from getting the darkness unlocked, which means even more leadership for the Mordor faction. And look at the minimap, you know. When you have no Haradrim Palace, guys, trust me on that one, this minimap would not lo look like that, you know. Mordor would have nothing besides maybe one single settlement outside. Hordes and hordes of orcs. Now he's building up a troll cage and not saving for the Witch King quite yet. Which is okay, you know, you can pretty much do that at the same time. But again, I like to have some units for the protection just for the worst case scenario. What is the worst, the worst case scenario? Of course, it is to lose the Nazgul because that's going to give Gondor a opening. Then it might commit on your base. And when you have nothing to defend and you are still oh, desperately oh, trying oh. to save for the Witch King, it might be pretty much the end of the game for you. This is no Orkhorn. Alvin Ally summon. Farami is getting punched on the, in the face. A heal is gonna be used to save him. He started out being cancelled as Troll is going down anyway. But heal is on cooldown. Gandalf is hitting level 7 already. Warning arrow is available? Question mark? Let me check the warning arrow. It's available, yes. That means Nazgul can't really approach because Easter Red is available and the warning arrow is available. This combination is enough to one shot the Nazgul from 100 to 0. And you will get the chance to see that now, you see? Oh, but the troll was able to smash him before he was able to cast the warning arrow. And looks like the Nazgul is gonna get in safety just for now. Gondonize, they took a lot of damage, I believe. The attack will be defended for now. And Nazgul has to just avoid his Elven Warriors, and he is good to go. But during all this time, important, you see at the bottom left side, the outpost is going to be fully destroyed from Mordor player, which is ama amazing. And he just lost a couple of trolls, but he killed Faramir, and he was making sure that he is in a good spot. Heal is on cooldown. Gondonites are badly damaged. So there is not much Gondor can achieve from this attack anymore. And again, he can use the Nazgul in the meantime to kill some more Gondonites left and right, feed some more power points, because as you guys know, the game-winning, game-changing point is when you get to the 20 power points after the darkness to unlock your Balrog of Morgoth. To full, fully one-shot a entire Gondor castle all alone. Level 7 needs to be careful. Let's have upgrades, actually. Heavy armor, not, but he has Forge Blades and Night Shields. He also needs heavy armor, of course, but it's easier said than done because he's broke. Fire arrow getting purchased first. Heavy armor also purchased from the armory. So he needs to make a lot of investments into many, many possible different upgrades, of course, to get his army as strong as he potentially can become. Maybe even revive Faramir, but he has not the money to do that yet. Gandalf is looking for a chance to kill some units left and right. And that's one of the matchups in which the War of Power from Gandalf doesn't have as much impact as against Isengard, for example, or Rohan, or even Gondor, you know? Because trolls are very, or the monsters generally, also Mumma kills, are quite resistant against the War of Power. And of course, you cannot target the flying heroes like Nazgûl or Witch King with that. So it's a bit less useful in this matchup. It's still good for knocking down the enemy trolls, still damaging them though, but not being able to one-shot them. You see the Haradrims? They can kill those soldiers in no time, or horses in no time. I will be used for that. He's the on the troll. That means the Nazgul can keep doing what he's doing. 
into the Zaplas to keep the outpost protected. All you gotta do is dodge the incoming damage from the East Satellite or Lightning Sword, sorry. And he's just in a phenomenal spot. You need to understand the basics about the game that when a ability is used, you need to also have a feeling about how long this ability will have a cooldown. Then you can actually commit on the mistakes from your opponent and punish him for that. Now he knows, okay, I don't need to be worried. He was just using his Easter land. He was using his... his I can't even talk. His Blizzard Blast. So I can do whatever, whatever I want to do. As for example, taking down this outpost. And look at the minimap in the meantime. Do you see that, guys? Gondor is pretty much nothing beside two farms. And that's it. Or three farms, rather. Beautiful hit from the... With the Witch King. He knows Easter land. No, never mind. It's back up. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. The burst, man. The burst is crazy, my dude. And now he has rangers. Now it's a different story. Because if you place those rangers inside the outpost, not only you will have a crazy amount of protection, but also with the statue behind, they will have 100% damage leadership. They will hit twice as hard. That's crazy. Gandalf is just fishing power points left and right. And Eagles is a break point for this game. Eagles is a massive power spike for Gondor. Mordor is getting rich though, he has so much money. Uh, he's going now for the second Nazgul, which is definitely a mistake. Just cancel the Nazgul and save for the Witch King at this point. Maybe he's gonna wait until the very end and just cancel it before. Let's see if this is gonna be the plan. Because I believe Witch King would have just much more value for the Mordor player right now. He's not gonna cancel it. I'm kinda shocked or a bit surprised. I was expecting him to cancel it and go for the Witch King instead, but nope. That's not being the case. Maybe once they have a unit right now which you can use for defense. Again, now it's a different story. Now don't commit anymore. Because ranges inside it. You see the damage? Boom, 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 boom. And the troll is gone. Now he's actually over committing and making mistake over mistake. It might co you know, cost him the area at the bottom left side. Which he was now holding for a quite long time. But Mordor's money is looking good, guys. Trust me on that one. Like, yes industry he has a bunch of mills outside and yeah should be getting to the point in which he can get more trolls drama troll and even witch king on the field oh eagle summon and the, the nazgul just like 10 seconds after he arrived will be taken down you can charge with the nazgul if you charge he's as fast as the eagles and the eagle will not be able to catch him as you can see until right when you charge and when you have nothing to attack you can always use guard key but gondor is paying attention to that Nazgul is getting, trying to get in safety, attacking the Gondonites around this side, making him charge. In the meantime, this outpost is going to be eventually taken down. The Nazgul might need to fly inside the castle. This way, the Eagles are going to be focused on from all these level 3 buildings and towers. They will take a lot of damage. Look how much damage they are taking. And the Nazgul keeps kiting all the time. But he's running eventually straight into the Gandalf. Never mind, just fly away. Very nice micro here from the model player. I like to see that, you know? That's some next level stuff. <laughs> Very important, by the way. That's the difference between a good player and a great player. Don't sacrifice. You know, most of the players, they would like, okay, GG, I lost my Nazgul. But this is not of one of these model players. And look at that. With the micro, he was not only able to save his Nazgul, but he was even able to get more power points after killing those eagles with the towers inside the castle. Very nice. The second Nazgul is getting revived in the meantime. But unfortunately, he lost the outpost at the bottom left side. His money is also going down as he loses the map control. And he needs, then, he needs more than 5,000 still for the Witch King. Gondor in the meantime... The Eagle Summon wasn't the most successful summon in the game. Uh, he still needs 8 power points for the army after that. And collecting power points for the evil factions are is a always like a little bit easier. So okay. even though it looks like Mordor is further away, he's actually not. <laughs> Mordor is making a move now. He knows Eagles are on cooldown and Eagles is, are like army after that or Balrog. They have the same cooldown like army after that or Balrog by the way. So now Mordor knows he has like a huge cooldown window he can use to make a move. Rangers are going to be placed in the outpost once again. Same also around the top side. This way Gondor can make sure that he has the control of this area. Which is very important. Because the last thing you want is give Mordor lots of map control. So he can afford to lose everything and revive everything. Over and over again, you know. That's the last thing you want. Looking for a chance of Zaplast. Boom, there we go. But they don't even die anymore. You can see that, right? <laughs> They have like drama troll leadership, which is making them strong enough to not die. Imagine them having darkness or witch king nearby, or both at the same time. They would take almost no damage from the Vizal Plus anymore. That's how strong and how effective the leadership system works in Battle for Middle Earth 1.
So here's now the second Nazgul back on the field. Which is pretty nice because Nazguls or flying heroes generally like Eagles for example, they are the most mobile unit slash heroes in the entire game. And you have the chance to fly over river, over the mountain, you can get to the places where other units can never get. For example, you can pretty much send um, the seeds. Like on this map it's kind of difficult to explain but there are some maps like they have like a huge giant uh, mountain you know you can send him over the mountain and then he's untargetable there is nobody can that can reach out to him you know so you can get always in a safe place you can always fly over the over the sea over the river so it's a huge advantage for you to be fast enough and to switch sides from one one side to the other side and again, I would recommend to use the Nazgul for the map control fight because he has one Nazgul, you have two, uh, you have two Nazguls, he has one Gandalf only. So he can't be everywhere. Elven Wood into the Vizaplas, Gandalf is almost level 9. More levels are still very effective because more levels mean more damage. As he was one shot in the troll with the Easter Light. The Mumakil or the not Mumakil, sorry. The Drama Troll is gonna be taken down next. Mordor on the other side, it looks like he wants to save up for the Witch King now, finally. Yeah, imagine him not getting the second Nazgul and going for the Witch King instead. It would be a different story. Now he's also sacrificing lots of these trolls and drummer trolls. Which is not the best thing in the world because it's giving it's giving Gondor even more and more power points all the time. So Gondor now still needs six power points. And even though it sounds crazy, but trust me, like the army of the dead is also not as effective in this matchup as it is in every other matchup because you cannot kill flying heroes with the army of the dead. So Basically, if Mordor has three flyers, like two Nazgûls and the Witch King, he can still be able to defend himself. That's why Gondor will need rangers in a lot of them. The outpost is going to be taken down. Darkness has been used for that. And Witch King is now finally being recruited. He lost the Nazgûl, by the way. I didn't even pay attention where he lost the Nazgûl. Sorry for that. Gandalf basically almost... He might have lost the Nazgûl to the Elven Arches, potentially. More rangers and... You know, when these games are lasting that long, what Gondo should do, or can do if he wants to, is get a marketplace and buy the Grand Harvest for 40% more money from the farms inside and outside of your base. You know, the longer the game goes on, the more value and more advantage you will get from this upgrade. It's a long-time investment, of course, but it's worth it, trust me. Looks like we got some more labor scum. Looks like we got some more labor scum. Very Green took almost level 7. Oh, Eagle Summon now. On the Nazgul. And the Nazgul is going to be taken down, unfortunately. Oh, man. That's that's bad. Because, again, you know, reviving them is for free. But when you lose them, you pretty much feed power points to your, to your opponent. And also, you need to wait a lot, a long time until they rejoin the battlefield for you. I mean, losing the Nazguls is bad. But losing the Witch King is even worse. Or the worst thing, actually, ever. It's your most valuable... Uh, unit slash hero on the field don't lose him because you lose 50 percent damage and armor leadership if you do that yes the easter light he will be using it on the, on the witch king eagles can clump come by the way and finish him off eventually so now witch king has to be extremely careful don't lose him a gandalf has been taken down by the witch king of engmar can't he get away he's microing once again targeting the farm at the bottom side I'm assuming that's what he's doing. But Gondor can do is demolish the farm. They demolish the farm, then there is nothing to target, and the eagles will catch up. Like he did, you see? He did demolish the farm. So the eagles, are, but he's gonna take another farm. <laughs> so he's pretty much dancing around the rosy, trying to, uh, you know, and the eagles are gone now. Very smart move from Mordor, also smart move from Gondor, but I think the reaction was a little bit too, too slow. And the Witch King is saved. And not only that, but he was also able to kill the Gandalf and capture this outpost at the top right side. Very good for Mordor. Very, very good. You can see the money from... Oh, he has Balrog Summon. Oh my goodness. You can see the money from Gondor. He has not even the money to revive his Gandalf yet. And the Balrog Summon is available, which can be used to end this yeah, castle's career. You know what I'm saying? And there comes the Balrog of Morgoth, ladies and gentlemen. Booyah! The demon of the ancient world is here to end the life of the good guys of the men of the west in middle earth he was not using the ignite but it's okay now you can use it step up use it oh boom you see he cancels out animation immediately he doesn't wait until the breath fire is fully finished this way you can save time and be more active and be more successful before gandalf 
And again, this is the best case scenario. You kill five buildings, which is pretty much more than enough to finish off the entire castle. Gondor will be losing it definitely at the castle, but he has a lot of money. There is a world in which he might potentially be able to repurchase this castle very soon, as Mordor doesn't have too much, too many units on the field right now. But Eagles are on cooldown, and he's only two power points away from getting the army of the dead unlocked. However, without Gandalf, he will not be able to reclaim the control of this game anymore, since there are gonna be just too many Nazgûls. Remember, he has the Witch King. Uh, the first Nazgul is back, and the second one is also on his way. So he will have three flying heroes, and Mordor, I believe, has enough money, almost enough money, to buy this castle. So that would be kind of a GG situation if Mordor can do that. The Witch King is taking a lot of damage from the, Eagle, uh, from the Rangers, but you know what the problem again? Like I said many, many times, the lack of damage leadership. That's what I'm talking about. That's why you need Boromir in this situation. You need Boromir. Smart move, getting Devastation to get the money to buy the castle. This way... Mordor now out of four big settlements, and there are two castles and two outposts. He has the control of the three of them. So the only thing he has to do is destroy the outpost at the bottom left side, and he will be victorious, guys. Gondor has no money. He's trying to get Gandalf back on the field. He has, I believe, like one, two farms out, three farms outside. But it's a matter of time, and he will be losing them one by one. He has two Gondonites, three Gondonites, two Rangers. Yes, three Nate, three. I can't even talk. Three Rangers and three Gondonites. But is this gonna be enough to defeat the forces of darkness? Full base for Mordor already. He's gonna grow rich. He can do whatever he wants. He can make Muma kills. He can get five siege works on the field with this much map control. Mordor will have no problems with the resources. Like yes, Haradrim Palace level three, Trollkish level three, Nazgul is back now. They have three flying heroes, uh, three bases. What else do you want? Perfect situation. Or Mordor. And even if Gandalf comes and rejoins the battlefield, I don't think he will have the amount of impact Gondor play is hoping for. Again, even if he gets level 10, I, I don't think that would be a game-changing moment in this matchup at least. But with the Eagles, he might make something happen. And his priority should be killing those Nazgûls first. Because once those Nazgûls are dead, and I'm also not I'm also talking about the Witch King, by the way, then you have some freedom and you might be able to reclaim the map control to get the money to eventually destroy this castle before furnaces are hitting level 3 because if furnaces are hitting level 3 this base is going to be just too tanky to be taken down you know with one single attempt you will need to attack it multiple times so Gondor is fighting until the very end i like that one power point and a half away from the off breakers but the time is not in his favor because also the Balrog is recharging during the same time. So, Eagle Summon will be used to kill those runes and get the power points he needs. Like, he's desperately trying to fish power points now. He knows focusing on the, the Nazgul is gonna just be a waste of time because Mordor player is just able to dodge that by targeting multiple different buildings or units from the Gondor player and being as fast as the Eagles are. This way, you will never be able to catch the Nazguls. That's why you should be trying to kill some units, buildings, instead to get the power points you need. He needs a little bit less than a one, than one. The Nazgûls against the Witch, against the Eagles. I want to see that. And by the way, Nazgûls are so much stronger than Eagles. <laughs> I mean, the other way around, sorry. Eagles are so much stronger than Nazgûls. So much more stronger. Like, two Eagles can take down two Nazgûls in no time. The amount of damage they are dealing is kind of nuts. Gandalf is also on the field, level 9. Okay, looking for a chance, but Gandalf is going to be targeted by three Nazgûls. Look, they don't even die, dude. Only Orc Arches, by the way, Orc Combos, but they have so much leadership, they don't even die. Okay, he has 10, 10 power points now, but he's going to be taken down. Too much damage there. He has, the, yeah, he has Gandalf again in the graveyard. <laughs> uh, Army of the Dead, but again, you cannot target the Nazgûls slash the Witch King with that. He killed only one single Nazgul, but that's not a trade you want you wanna you wanna take, you know? Because Mordor has the money and he doesn't even need the money to revive the Nazgul, while Gandalf will cost you 2800, so. Okay, trolls are charging in. I'm assuming he's waiting until Mordor is fully committed. Then he can just use army of the dead. But he needs to do that before the Tita has been taken down. Now just target the Nazgul slash the Witch King with your ranges inside the Tita. But he has not even the statue around. Which means the DPS is not going to be the greatest. Again, the lack of damage leadership is coming in clutch for Mordor indeed. In this way, Mordor is going to be in a good spot. 
the second army after that is gonna be gone. Uh, the Balrog I mean, might be used, you know. And Balrog, holy moly, is of course able to. I mean, a Balrog was just ki killing a castle. Do you think it's not gonna be enough to finish off our outputs? GG, well played. Mordor is victorious, and Sauron, ladies and gentlemen, shall rule the middle earth if this was enjoyable guys please don't forget to leave a like on this video likes are helping quite a lot subscribe for more content like this in the future and also check me out on my second youtube channel which is called pfme world the link in the description down below it's including all the uploads from our twitch channel which is like mainly pfme 2 in the rise of the witch king if you are interested in this kind of content you can check it out as well and i will see you next time until then keep hitting like a track and as always stay beyond standards peace out